The only way to celebrate the new mass, the old mass, is because of reasons of faith. The only way you are allowed to reject the new mass as such is because of reasons of faith. If there are no reasons of faith against the new mass, well, the Pope just came up with a new thing. The Pope is the Pope is the Pope all the time, and you better follow him, right? The only way to contradict the Pope is when you prove him wrong in matters of faith and morals. Teaching, I mean. I don't care about the Pope's private morals. Alexander VI had children while he was Pope, but he never touched the faith or the liturgy. I prefer him over Paul VI for that reason. There were heretics before. You'll find also this on another tape, but Pope Liberius was in heresy. Pope Honorius was in heresy. Pope John XXII was in heresy. All the three popes were rejected. All the three popes were judged by the church. The present pope will be judged by the church. The new liturgy will be judged and discarded by the church, by the infallible and indefectible church. I reject the reasons for celebrating the old mass from those priests who at the same time objectively and may it be only for diplomatic reasons, agree with Vatican II. There is no way that you can agree with heresy even for diplomatic reasons, for reasons of emergency. To agree with heresy is not, cannot be part of self-defense. And this is exactly why uh, Archbishop Lefebvre had the right to reject the new mass, because he did not do so because of reasons of content, because of reasons of what he of preference, but because of reasons of faith. And the 1962 Mass, as much as I dislike it, is the last acceptable missal. And woe unto the people who put themselves in the position of a Pope and judge it. I reject it for the reasons I gave you. I do not judge the priests who use it. I do not excommunicate the priests who use it by saying they are not in the church. They are not saying the Mass of Pius V. I do not say that, and I reject that. What is the Mass of Pius V is to, for a Pope to judge, unless it's as evident as it is with the 1965 Missal. My theological opinion on this is, you cannot see in the 1962 Missal, you cannot see anything that makes the 1962 Mass cease to be the Mass of Pius V. In the 1965 Missal, it's evident, it's obvious. The 1965 is halfway over to the new Mass. The 1962, with whatever it has and I don't like, is still in continuity with the Mass of Pius V. Leave it to future popes to decide, not to some women who have nothing else to do. Reject the new Mass because of reasons of faith. Reject Vatican II because it pronounces heresy. Reject whatever papal teaching you are confronted with if it pronounces heresy. Do not reject anything else. If you can prove to me that 1962, the Missal contains heresy, if you prove it to me, I will reject it as such. If you cannot prove it to me, please shut up. It's not for you to decide. Leave these things in the hands of the clergy. As a matter of fact, the bishops. We happen to have six traditional bishops. And listen to them. And I have never read anything in the Angelus that would say the 1962 Missal was not all right. That is the judgment of Bishop Williamson, of Bishop Tissier de Malaret, of Bishop Galareta, of Bishop Fillet, of Bishop Ranchiel, and of Bishop Lazo. And if they say you may accept it, then I say you may accept it, even though I don't do it. I say you may. I not say you must, I say you may. And I will never say you must not. It's not for me to say that. 
The Society of St. Pius X still yet has to prove that it is outside the church in any point whatsoever. I've never heard heresy from them. I've never heard anything from them. I'm not talking about the individuals. Individual priests are, are fallible. Absolutely, and how? I've never heard anything coming from the Society of St. Pius X as such that would have to be rejected. So if you are confronted with difficulties in this point, don't be ungrateful. Or do you think in the 1930s when the church was so beautifully all right, or in the 19th century when the church was so beautifully all right, you never had bad parish priests? Of course you had. And sometimes you'd be in a bad situation because of that. Imagine, I don't know if it happened, imagine you living in the 1930s in Oklahoma, or in the 1930s somewhere out in Wyoming, your parish priest is lousy, and the next priest is uh, 60 miles away. You were stuck. So if it happens nowadays, for the fact that not all the members of the Society of St. Pius X can possibly be saints, pray for them. Don't judge. As Cardinal Siri said on another occasion, leave the judgment of priests to the clergy. Pray for them. If you think them wrong, pray for them anyway, because they desperately need it. Priests are subject to 10,000 times more temptations than you are in any of the commandments, no matter what. And if you find yourself, which is, of course, regrettable, if you find yourself stuck with a priest you cannot possibly like because he does things you don't like, then pray for him. In the old days, it wasn't better. And I can tell you one thing. I've met many priests of the Society of St. Pius X, and the great vast majority of them is the dream of a bishop of the old days. In the old days, a bishop of a diocese would have jumped for joy if the average of his priests would have been like the average of the priests of St. Pius X. Do not expect every member of that group to be an outstanding saint. That is impossible. Thank the Lord on your knees that you haven't found a heretic there yet. Thank you.